Hello. This is take three. So I don't know what's going on. So it must be something with Facebook. But I keep freezing up over here or getting kicked out. Uh, I don't know if you guys can keep bearing with me or going through all this. I mean, the technology, uh, I can't explain it. So I'm back. I'm here to be with you guys. I'm here to have you in the studio. So I don't know what's going on. So this is take three. So uh, I'm happy to have you here. <laughs> We'll see how far we get with this, but I'm going to jump right into the painting. It's a painting I started two weeks ago. Uh, I left it where I, where we left off two weeks ago. Of course, I couldn't be here last week. So uh, if you're hearing this again and again and again, it's because we've this is take three. So, uh, so I'm going to start. I'm going to paint a little bit of a landscape uh, underneath the clouds, uh, the clouds that I started a couple weeks ago. Uh, no drawing. I'm just going to get right into it and just start painting. And this is a nice little exercise when you do watercolor. And I'll kind of show you a few little tricks of how you can layer and how you can make the sky kind of come together uh, because you're laying a landscape underneath. It's just like what we see in the world and uh, in, the, in, in creation. So uh, I'm just going to get to it. Hopefully I don't get cut off here. Uh, I guess this, you know, we'll just see where it goes. So, and then I'll come back for you some Q&A. So bear with me. Okay. All right. Let me get this set up here. I guess you guys have all been through this before with other people that you follow. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to focus in. Now, some of you probably remember this. I'm just going to come in here on the, on the painting. Uh, two weeks ago, I was showing you a, a technique where it was just I, I put a blue wash down and uh, and I just kind of used gesso for the clouds. OK, let me just adjust here. Does that look good for you guys? And we're still here. I see words going up. OK, so I'm going to be focusing on the bottom portion in here. Uh, just laying landscape in uh, just so you can see how how much freedom you can have with watercolor uh so okay let me just get set up here uh i'm using the rosemary brushes uh i told you about those uh in past sessions uh i have a, a an eight a six a four and a zero brush uh again these brushes are from england uh rosemary brushes is what they're called and you can order them right online uh when i post this video uh on Facebook, uh, I'll put the information of the of the uh, materials that I use so you guys can order them. So, all right. So I'm just dipping. I'm going to work in the, with an eight brush. So I'm just dipping that in the water, and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of lay some some washes it's not going to have any detail it's just going to be i'm just going to have fun with creating just with mark made with a brush i'm going to be drawing with a brush and i'm going to be aware though of my cooler colors being further back if you look in landscapes colors are cooler in the back and they get warmer as they come forward so so what i'm going to do i just have a little bit of blue a touch of green and i'm just going to come back here And I'm just going to create a horizon. Now, I'm not, I'm not worried just yet. Now, you could draw things in first. But right now, I'm just kind of just having fun and experimenting a little bit. And yeah, even though I've been painting for 30 years, uh, I still like to experiment. Because it's a good way to learn. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to... Now, I'm also working uh, upright. Uh and I'm doing this mostly to show you guys so you could see it. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing washes like this, I'll lay it a little flatter. Uh, but through the years, I've had to work working up more upright just for my back and stuff. So, okay, so I'm just going to lay a little bit of a wash. Now, this is kind of a little bit of blue and a little green. I'm not sure... I'm just kind of just 
drawing uh, just kind of like laying washes on i'm not exactly sure what i want to do yet i don't know if they're going to be hills if there's going to be trees but again those are things that i can add later so as i'm coming down across here i'm adding a little bit more green it's going to get a little warmer colors get a little bit warmer as it comes forward So I come down through here. And sometimes the, be the beautiful thing about watercolor is, is allowing the, the paint to do its, its own thing. So uh, letting it, you know, letting it drip. You want to kind of have a little bit of control, especially if it's dripping too much. Uh, but it's nice to just let it blend. And again, it's all transparent. And again, the other thing too, it's going to have harmony because it's got all that same blue, that blue wash that I put on for the sky, it's all underneath. So it's going to have a nice harmony to it. Now I'm going to add a little bit more yellow green. I wish I could show you the palette too. I'll, I'll figure out a way that I can show the palette as well as I'm painting where you can see the palette and the painting. I really need a little, uh, like, you know, somebody to actually uh, hold the camera for me. I think that would work pretty well. Now I'm thinking with this, I'm going to do kind of like some fields. So again, right now it's kind of like a wet on wet that I'm doing. Okay. And the beautiful thing is, is even though this is just, a, again, you've, you've seen my work and it gets very detailed, but so you look at this and it, it kind of has a simple look to it, but the beautiful thing about this is when it dries, I'll go back and I, I might say, okay, I might want to add a tree line or some like fields in the back. Uh, now, like what I'm seeing here is this is draw, drying a little hard there. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to go back and do it a little bit deeper. Sometimes uh, when you put you put paint on a dry area where there's watercolor, it, it can dry a little hard and you want to kind of try and stay away from those lines. I mean, sometimes it can be part of your technique. But what I want to do is I want to soften that a little bit. But the other thing, too, is I can go back with gesso and fix that horizon to soften it. And I might be able to do that with you guys tonight. I can probably show you a little technique there. Okay, so, so while I have that a little wet, you, sometimes it's nice to take advantage of, uh, of the wet, the wet paint, because it'll blend. That's where that happy mistakes, those happy, pleasant mistakes happen, where it's that natural blending. I wouldn't even call them mistakes, but it's, it's maybe discovery. You're discovering how it just kind of works together, so. I'm going to put a little bit of blue down in here, even though it's getting warmer as it comes forward. You could have a little area where the, there's a little blue where it dips and it can kind of create a, an area, an area spot. Okay, so I'm going to come down through here. And I'll just soften this by just taking a little water, dabbing it on my, my paper towel. And just kind of lifting a little bit of that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this dry for a few minutes. Okay. And I hope you guys have uh, been doing well. I Do any of you have plans this weekend? Uh, I'm sure you guys are all from all over the world or all over the states. And I'm not sure what people are doing. But this is usually a weekend where we can all get together and have fun. But... Not so much this year, right? Okay, so. I think what I'm gonna do here, while this is a little wet, I'm just gonna make this a little bit deeper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of creating a separation of this little, maybe a little mound of grass that's in the foreground. And as you can see, the, it dries pretty quick. 
And so I'm just kind of laying it in. It's still a little wet, so it'll blend nicely. And then what this does is this kind of creates this like a little bit of an air. I'll bring it up a little closer. It has like a blue color. Some of that's the blue that's shining through uh, from underneath, but it's a, it's a separation. So I have that little area. So I'm gonna let this dry. And a, a good technique to do, uh, a good tool to use is if you're, and if you wanna move quicker, you can have a little uh, blow dryer on hand like and put it on low. And that's a good way to, to dry it and speed up the process a little bit. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take a little bit of that green wash and I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna create another just another area, like another part of that valley, you know, rolling hills, rolling pastures, I wouldn't call it. That's kind of what I had in mind with this. So, so I have that and I'm just going to, so you lay that in first and then dip it in the, in the water and just dab it on the paper towel and just softly touch the bottom like this. Now, you always want to be aware of what your light source is. So right now, I'm kind of having it where you're seeing the tops of the, of the, of the hills and then kind of like a mist that's going to be in between. So, so I'm lifting the paint off as it blends down. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, get a little bit more green. And again, this is still kind of wet. I'm going to come back here. And you can work with smaller brushes if you like, but for washes like this, like base coats, a lot of times I like to work with a, a larger brush. Okay, so I'm going to soften that. I'm taking the paint off, a little water off. And I'll bring it up close to you guys so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So what you're seeing is you're just seeing layers and layers and layers going back. Now, I'm going to go all the way back and I'm going to introduce another color. I'm adding a little bit of purple with that blue. And I'm going to put like a far distant, it could even be kind of mountains. But I'm still following the same kind of thing where I'm going the darker part on the top. Maybe we'll bring it back here. And then I'm leaving this and what I'm doing is I'm dabbing, putting my brush in the water, dabbing the uh, brush. So it's kind of, it's, it's not totally dry, but it's enough to pull the paint and just soften it. So it's like kind of like a mist. And again, this is just layers and layers and layers of hills. And it's not going to stay like this, of course, because I would add trees and I would add more things to it. So uh, I'm hoping it'll dry enough that I can actually show a little tree line for you guys or some tree, you know, something that'll make it really pop. So again, it's just layers that I'm just building up, building up. And uh, let's see if I get a tree in here. All right. Maybe what we'll do is I'm going to put, I don't know if you guys enjoy seeing, one of my favorite things is walking through the woods and then walking out into like a, an open meadow, you know, where you're, you're in these, you're surrounded by all these trees in the woods and then all of a sudden you opens, it opens up into these rolling hills and then you see a few, a few trees, a uh, few shrubs. I've always, uh, always have loved that. So let me see. Right now, I'm going to mix a little blue, a little bit of brown. And I'm going to try to create 
some sort of a tree, like a little group of trees. So let's see. So I'm going to think of composition. So I'm thinking, let's see. So let's go about here. A little more brown. Now, the thing with trees, especially like doing landscapes with watercolors, you're just kind of thinking of the shapes. You don't have to worry about the detail or anything. And especially when you're working a little wet on wet, uh, let the paint do its thing. Do you, you want to still control it by the amount of water you use? Oh, and by the way, if any of you want to see just the picture without the comments, you can always swipe it left. I think you swipe left or right. Uh, and you might be able to see the whole thing. Okay, so, and let's see, we'll have another, another tree here. And this is still just kind of like base coat. And what I mean by base coat is just, it's kind of like a first pass. And I'm creating as I go. I, there's no drawing or anything. I'm just kind of having fun with it. And you're seeing this area where it's dripping down. It's because we're working. I'm working upright. For this kind of thing, I would be a little bit more flatter. But I'm trying to do this so that you guys can kind of see. But you can control these little, these areas where it's dripping down. Just dab your brush on the paper towel. And, and just kind of, the brush will drink it right up. So, let's see. Maybe something like right there. And what I'm using, I'm just using a little bit of brown, a little blue, and a little green. And the beautiful thing about these brushes is you can, it still has a really nice point. So I can lay a big wash on with water and paint, and then I can go in and just kind of use the point of the brush and give really fine lines here. Like, so I can kind of see, so while it's still wet, I want to just add for these the trunk of the tree. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of brown and it'll bleed in with the uh, with the green and the and the blue. It's just kind of so it's kind of like you're working kind of like a silhouette. Maybe there's two trees here like growing together. Lovers, right? I'm sure you've seen lots of trees out there where you see them together and I that's one of the things I love to paint is putting those two trees together okay maybe come back here just a little baby tree all right so so you as you can see it's just kind of like a little group of trees now with that I'm not going to let it float in nowhere right so I'm going to go back Clean my brush off and I'm going to go with another, a little bit of green. Okay, and I'm going to do it like another layer. So say this is sitting up on a hill, like a, another plateau in those rolling hills. So, and look at how it just bleeds in. Now, a good way to control it, especially if you're working upright, you can just turn the piece upside down. And you can allow, because you want some of that, let's get that up there. You can let it bleed upward, and that way you can keep the bottom part lighter where it goes into the mist area. Let's say it drops down. Down there. Okay. As you can see, and I see your comments, so, but as you can see, I'm starting to get these little layers, and it just was, there was nothing, there's no pencils or anything, and don't worry about if it's bleeding too much, because again, you'll go back, you can go back in there and use a smaller brush, and you could go back in with a pencil if you want. So right now, I'm going to just take a little water. 
just kind of blend that down. Again, work with the paint. Let it let it show you some things. Let it surprise you. And it's like any medium. The more you work with it, it's just there's always these neat little surprises. And we all like surprises, right? We like these special things that pop into our lives. And that painting can be that way too. It can be a great discovery. So as you can see, there's just something going on here. You can start to see little fireflies, right? We're starting to see... A nice little place we want to go for a walk. Uh, and again, it's just still basic washes. Let me see if I can turn that a little bit. So I'm seeing right here, I want to deepen that. It looks like another little plateau, but it looks like it'd be another set of trees. So I'm going to go back here. Okay. And let's just get a little group of trees back in here. Now I'm going to work with a uh, smaller brush as you as you work further back and you work smaller go ahead to a, to a smaller brush so I'm going to work with a, a six brush versus the eight so as you go further back the detail gets a little bit smaller so I'm going to do the same thing here put a little group of trees and this is just this is fun it's what's nice is as you when you create like this versus having everything drawled out you there's it's a journey that you take and you never know where you're going to go with it a lot of times when you draw everything out and there's nothing wrong with it i do it i do it all the time but a lot of times i like to do these little paintings where i just kind of start like this where there's no drawing and i just have fun with the experience experience and letting the medium show me what's going to happen and letting as I'm painting I'm creating it's it, so like you know how when we think things through too much you can overthink something it's like that with painting and you you can be too hard on your on yourself you can be too hard on your painting uh, and you expect too much on the start and sometimes it's good to just be free. So this is a good way of being free. So, so I'm doing the same kind of thing here with the trees. Maybe we'll put like that. So this is another layer back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. And I'm going to just put another layer. And it's really important to think, again, like I said earlier, where is your light source? Where, where do you want to see your lights and your darks? So my whole thing is that this might be kind of maybe in, in the morning or misty hills. The mist will break up where the hills are. So the tops of the hills will be darker and where they fade out into the mist. So it's really important to follow through all the way through with your whole landscape like that uh, to make it believable. So I'm doing the same thing here, getting a little lighter as I'm blending down. And it's just going to disappear. And you guys know the beautiful thing about this and the techniques that I'm showing you. It's okay to do whatever you want right here. But you can, you, and even if you there's something that you want to take out later, you can because we have the gesso. So and. The, uh, maybe the next uh, next thing I can do is I can show you a little bit more tricks with the gesso. I'll have to look through a lot of the comments that you guys gave me. Uh, but feel free to mention anything in this post or in the comments right now of things you would like to see me do. And uh, I think I'll, I'll probably do this through the summer months if you guys, if you guys can take me that much. Uh, I'm having fun doing it. So right now I'm just kind of fading that out so here you go there's another ridge and it looks like again you can keep going back and back and uh, before you know it this landscape will get it'll come more forward and it'll go further back and the sky will come more alive and again we're not even done with the clouds or anything i haven't really done much in the sky i was just kind of showing you what gesso can do as kind of like a start as a base so i'm going to come back to you guys uh and just ask you guys, you guys can ask me some questions uh, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm happy the video is still working. So here we go.
let me uh, zoom out there. Okay. We don't need it. Need to look at me up close. Okay. So let's fix this. Okay. So ask me some questions and uh, I hope I hope what I showed you tonight is some help and uh, I'll put I'll put the uh, the things that I use uh, the materials I use uh, on the post and I think you guys are kind of figuring out how this is going uh, after it's live here it goes it shows up on the Facebook page and you guys can look back and uh, and you can go from there but I'll answer some questions right now so okay uh so let's see any questions uh, thank you for the comments the comments are amazing so okay uh so are there any things that you guys would like me to do for future future uh sessions okay thank you for the comments okay Oh, okay. Yeah, Karen's mentioning, uh, would love to watch you as long as I'm having fun. Uh, she's mentioning that she's never worked with watercolor, but Karen, it's it's a great medium. So, and I am having fun. So, uh, oh, okay. So Brianna's asking, can you show us how to paint fairy wings one Wednesday? I think that's a good idea. Uh, I can certainly do that. Uh, I would use, a, I would use gesso for that. Uh, but Je and Jessa really is real magical and uh, for bringing out like that glow. So, but again, to have glow, you need a surrounding to make it really glow. So, okay, Kathy's asking, what's my favorite thing to paint? So, uh, I love painting people. You probably would say my trees. So, I, I like doing the trees, but I think that my favorite thing is people. Uh, Draw a skunk and a fairy. I'll have to do that, Mary, sometime. Okay. Uh, Ingrid is asking, uh, doing watercolors is harder than other forms of painting. Uh, I, I find watercolors, like, I've always been partial to it because I can build, I, I've always drawn. So watercolors is nice because you can actually see the drawing uh, underneath. Uh, with other other forms like opaque uh, mediums like oils and acrylic, you can work uh, work them transparently, but they tend they tend to be more opaque. Uh, so I find it harder to do oils and acrylic. But people I've heard people say that they have a hard time doing watercolors. So I think it's really anything you work with. The more you work with it, you get familiar with it. Good question. So. Oh, uh, okay. So when was, when I started, uh, watercolors, how long did it take, uh, before I got good results or were you natural? So I, I'll have to show you guys sometime my artwork when I first started. It's nothing to brag about. Uh, I was kind of a late bloomer with painting. Uh, it took me to college to actually paint. Everything I did before college was drawing. Uh, but I would say, I would say I grew more after college in my, in my, in my watercolors and my technique, and I'm still learning. So, uh, yes, Jenny, you're asking about doing, uh, skin tones. I think that would be a good, a good lesson sometime. <clears throat> Excuse me. Using acrylic markers for painting rocks with grants. Oh, any ideas? So Betsy, uh, I, th I've never worked with acrylic markers. Uh, I'll have to give that a try. I do acrylics though on the rocks. Uh, so Anita's asking me what decided, uh, what made me decide to do the live, uh, shows. So I think because of this whole, uh, this whole thing that we're going through, uh, I just felt like maybe this would be a good opportunity for me to share and like, I, it's, I, I owe you guys so much. So for me, it's the least I can do. So I'll take another question and then I'm going to have to say goodnight.
Okay. <coughs> Do you ever use color pencils? Linda, that's a good question. I use a lot of like earthy uh color pencils like browns and greens uh but i don't do whole art pieces that are all in that uh as you can see some of the, sometimes i'll do sepia drawings that'll be in color pencil uh but every once in a while i'll put i'll use color pencil with the watercolor it's a good medium to work with the watercolor it marries really well with it so so guys thank you so much for being here we'll do this next uh wednesday same time same place Mention things in the uh, in the comment section. Follow up with me. Send me messages. Do whatever you like. Those who who have ordered owls, by the way, a lot of owls are shipping out next week. So thank you for being patient. There were a lot of people who ordered these rock owls, uh, but a, a lot of them will be shipping out next week. So I've been busy doing the owl rocks. So I love you guys. Be safe. God bless you, and thank you so much for being here, okay? Next Wednesday, I'll be back. Okay, bye.